guess while it's waiting for it to get dark enough so I can do some night viewing tonight, I want to discuss uh, a little more about my uh, next image solar system imaging camera that I purchased. And uh, uh, I want to make sure people understand that the name in itself, uh, the solar system imaging, is it's actually designed for solar systems, the planets, moon, uh, the sun, and of course the sun if you've got the proper uh, solar filters to go with it. Uh, uh, a neutral density like a moon filter just won't cut it, otherwise you'll totally wipe out your uh, the CMOS sensor that does the imaging and won't be good for it. But uh, yeah, it, it's a solar system imager. It's not an OSDSO, deep space object camera. Uh, the longest exposure it can do is uh, 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 10 seconds and that really not going to do you any good for deep space objects but it's great for the solar system uh, you've probably seen some images that I've taken of the moon with it and uh, 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 Jupiter and Saturn uh, Mars is supposed to be up tonight maybe I'll stay up long enough to get, get some pictures of Mars but yeah it's uh, a CMOS sensor and it's a uh, USB 3 uh, port uh, camera and uh, uh, it's the USB 3 so it's, it actually transfers uh, images faster than uh, USB 2 I don't know but I think a USB 2 will work but it won't uh, uh, be as fast transferred to the computer and of course you've got to have a computer to view, view your images and take your images because it's got the uh, ICAP uh, software that controls the camera itself and uh, uh, but like I said before in one of my other videos it comes with the uh, next image 10 and it comes with a one and a quarter inch uh, tube to screw on for the eyepiece uh, also the uh, uh, duo lenses by uh, Celestron uh, with a C to T adapter uh, you can get and you can actually screw it on to uh, IP, certain eyepieces, the duo eyepieces, but they make a whole range of the duo eyepieces. Uh, so you can actually view through the eyepiece along with uh, being able to use the camera itself uh, just in the eye, uh, just in, for the eyepiece hole. Uh, but it's a pretty good camera and it is a CMOS. Uh, array in here and uh, uh, I've and I've shot some uh, uh, used a capture program on the computer so I can kind of show you how to control it uh, how to make setting changes to where it'll actually name it and keep numbers of the images as you go along and I think it's a pretty good camera uh, of course it would probably be a lot better if I had a little better telescope, but uh, I really can't complain. It's what I need. Um, like I say, this is a hobby for me, and I'm getting into it, and I'm learning, and I'm hopefully I'm passing on the information that I'm learning on to you guys that have, su have subscribed to my channel. And uh, anyway, we'll do some more imaging and uh, show you how the software works on the capture. All right. Let's talk about the imaging sensor on this camera. It's an ON Semi T9J003 color CMOS imager uh, sensor. It is, uh, you can see, as you can see here in, in the image here, there's a red area, and inside that red area, there's a small rectangle. And that is the actual CMOS imager. And the maximum resolution is 3,856 by 2,764 pixels on the maximum resolution camera. The sensor size is 6.4 millimeter by 4.6 millimeter. And the actual individual pixel size is 1.57 micron square. Well, I'm not sure what that means in size-wise, but I guess that means it's 
little bitty pixels. <laughs> All right. Like I said, that uh, you can actually, oh, you can actually attach a Ultimate Duo eyepiece to it with a T to C adapter, and what happens? The adapter, the C side of the adapter, screws right in here, like this. And then on your Ultimate Duo eyepiece, you take the cap off, and then you have to take off the eye, the, uh, the eye cup, and then that screws right onto here like this. And that way you can image through these Ultimate Duo's uh, eyepieces and like I said they they make a very various sizes and I got the five millimeter it's a 68 degree and it'll also double as a a two inch eyepiece to use on a two inch scope all right With the camera itself Once you get it together. Now, the, uh, it comes with uh, a, a cable that is a standard USB on one side, and then it's got the USB that matches the port on the camera for the other side. Plug it in here. And then plug it into my laptop and you'll actually hear it recognize that it's got a device on it. See the noise tells you it's on, on the device. Alright. Take a look at the iCap software. Go ahead and start it. Once it starts, it comes up, and if you don't have the camera plugged in, it finds no device found. So if you plug the camera in, and once it finds it, then you can hit refresh, and then it lists it, and you can select OK, and uh, it launch it. All right, I got Jupiter, uh, Saturn uh, centered in my scope, and what I can do is see I'm at that. 3,872 3, by 2764 so I can find it and now that I found it what I'm gonna what I can do is I can upgrade up drop down the uh, uh, resolution and it'll produce it a little bigger and I can bump up the Resolution, bump down the resolution again, and I can make the image bigger. Now, and I can take it even smaller here. Go to 640 by 480. Yeah, it gets closer every time you drop it down. What I can do is I can take it to bin two. See how it washes it out, and I can't change the the resolution. But you get the idea how you can change the different. Of course, you got the exposure. You can change on your exposure. You can change the gain. It gets brighter and darker. Of course, you can actually make this whole screen a little darker like that. Of course, then I can start a record. Of course, it's going to be moving pretty quick. So, I'm only going to get 20 or so frames out of it. And I'll stop it because it's going off the screen. But, that's the gist of... Uh, Take it back down so we can see more of it. And take it back to 10% because every time you change that resolution, it fills the screen. It fills the screen up. And 
here so you have your settings here you can go to video file you can tell it name it and then you can give it two different styles of timestamps the hours minute and seconds or the year minute the year month date hours minute seconds and it puts all that information right here in the name of the file so whenever you you take the image file that's what it names it and that's where it's putting it and you can do all sorts of things with here apply yeah close that window and then, of course, here you can change where it's going to go. And here, you can tell it to stop recording after so many minutes or seconds. You can tell it to stop recording after it captures so many frames. And then you can, then you can tell it to capture only one out of every five frames or ten frames or whatever. But, uh, yeah, and that, those are options that you have course the Kodak you have AVI and then MPEG, MPEG compression but video DB video and and uh, that's how you change your settings See, it's still here now is I'm going to take some images some snapshots so I go up here here and I can set my timers for intervals. I'm going to do five second intervals. And then I can tell it to stop after 10 frames. Or I can tell it to stop after 20 frames. So I can apply that and then start my timer. And it's going to take. every five seconds it's going to take a picture and it'll count down and it's going to save it right here where the next where it says here and it's going to give it the uh, date and time along with the sky JPEG that I called it the sky two more frames left completed my 20 frames so what I'll do is I'll go here and uh, see what we got Let's go the other way I think I'm going down And that's how you take individual frames instead of a video when you're using the iCap software. I'd also like to bring up the idea of uh, one gentleman that uh, has seen my videos uh, has he's got the same camera and he's got an issue. Well, this cable is it's a pretty sturdy cable and it doesn't bend very well, especially on the cam on the uh, uh, around the camera. Now, in a lot of cases, it's designed to be on like a straight through. Uh, rangefinder or, or a straight through eyepiece or uh, uh, reflector or refractor telescopes uh, S -S uh, SCT yeah SCT telescope where the eyepieces are actually in the back so whenever it would come off it would come directly straight kind of straight off well on the uh, reflect re re 
reflect reflector reflectors on reflectors uh, the eyepiece is towards the top here so it comes up and then it starts to drag down and the eyepiece whenever it's connected to the cable it like I say it's designed to be like this but on a refractor or a reflector on a reflector it's sitting like this so this this is kind of here and and I guess he's got uh, a, a reflector I'm not sure but he's the uh, connection here has come loose after he said three or four three or four uses and he gets a plaid uh, screen uh, effect on his imaging so it might be nice if uh, Celestron made a 90 degree to where it would come out and hang more instead of having all the weight coming off like this uh, but yeah I just wanted to point out that the, the, the one gentleman has said that there were issues and uh, 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 it's nice to know so if I ever start getting a plaid effect on my images then I'll know what it is and that's because it's the loose connection that has worked itself loose.